People that want to be the best have to give the most. If you're someone that wants to be a great grader, if you're someone that wants to have great coins or be able to spot coins that may be undergraded or may need CEC approval or you want to be the best at any particular business, most of the time it's just being completely obsessed, completely wanting to improve your knowledge base but also improve what you get to work with on a daily basis. I remember four or five years ago, I handled a MinState 62 Morgan and that's all I had, right? But me and Casey over the past few years have become obsessed with wanting to provide great coins to you guys, but also wanting to increase our knowledge base about how coins are graded, how we can work on selling you guys coins, how we can work with other dealers, how we can work on making better videos. So if you guys wanna be better at anything uh, especially in this hobby, I would just say dive all in, learn as much as you can, because knowledge at the end of the day is the most powerful tool, especially when you're talking about grading coins and looking at coins like this. Hey guys, wanted to show you something really cool that we ended up getting from that collection that we showed you in the last video. And these are some pretty neat things. So if you guys want to take a quick look here. So this is a 1952 triple mint set. And this came from the original packaging, the envelope right here. And uh, all, all pretty interesting coins, as you can see. I mean, we have the, I think right here, this one's the San Francisco, or actually that one's the Denver. This one's the San Francisco. And this one is the Philly. My favorite part though, is kind of just seeing the little bit of history behind it. So. We ended up looking through this envelope and we got something like this. This is what it says, stamps enclosed. And so when we opened this, we actually ended up finding that the treasurer of the United States cash division ended up sending the person who bought this, which was the original collector, uh, he ended, they ended up giving him a refund of 61 cents. And they actually, as a refund, gave him stamps instead of real money as a refund. And so he ended up buying these sets in 1952. We actually have three of them. And he ended up getting a refund for this one, probably got a refund for the others just because he overpaid. But that's just something that's pretty cool, something you don't see too often. And a lot of people have been calling and asking about, you know, original bankrolls and stuff like this. We're gonna be posting most of this stuff on our eBay in the coming weeks. So make sure to go over there and follow us. And if you're not on our email list yet, make sure to subscribe there because we do have all these things being posted so we can let you know when they go live and you can pick them up. We're gonna spend a few moments today talking to you guys about a $30,000 CAC submission that we sent in recently. Uh, we got some good grades back. We got some gold stickers. We also got some no stickers. And we're gonna take it nice and slow, talk to you guys about why we felt coins should have gotten the gold sticker, should have not gotten the gold sticker and got the green sticker and some that got no sticker. And hopefully it's beneficial to you, it helps you increase your knowledge in the space, and gives you guys a little bit more things to look out for when you're at shows, and wanting to see if a coin's original or not. There's a lot of things that happen to coins, and there's a lot of coins out there that just don't deserve the sticker, and there's very few sometimes original coins that you can put maybe in your collection if you're interested in it, but let's show you those coins right now. All right, guys, so the first coin I want to show you in this video is this 1819 Matrone set. It's great Mid State 63 Brown. The reason why I felt like this coin stickered is because it's rather problem-free in terms of the issues in the fields. You can see how there's a ton of area out there for a lot of hits to be had, and this coin is basically problem-free, as I can see. There's one little hit on the cheek. It's kind of hard to pick up on because of the scuffy holder. But another thing you should look out for with early scents is copper spots, like really bad corrosive spots or issues that, uh, I don't know, that would jump out at you, that would inhibit its luster and almost start to eat the coin. Once again, a lot of these coins might be discovered in dirt or uh, discovered in a place where there's a lot of moisture or a lot of humidity. And that's where these coins start to get really beat up. This coin overall no issues in terms of the fields, no issues in terms of corrosion or bad spots, and that's why I feel like this coin got the sticker. Next coin is this 1837 Coronet Head Large Scent. Once again, when we're looking out in the fields here, 
you can really see that there's no big distracting issues and you can see that you know when you're taking a look at the cheek there's no wear as well and I don't see any spots that would hold it back this one is a I think a Nukem 5 you can see that die crack going from the star above the head all the way down to about nine o'clock this is a small letter variety I believe in the center you could see that the letter is a little bit shorter than what most of these 1837's look like so a little bit of a tougher coin has a little bit of a red left to it as well you can see a few little touchy spots but I guess they passed on those thought they were okay and this coin is absolutely lovely then we have this 1838 seated dime, it's graded AU55, it is CEC approved overall, a very natural circulated coin. Most of these have been messed with beyond repair and a lot of their luster has been inhibited which means someone tried to almost make the luster look more nice than it is and a lot of these, you know, 1837, 1838s with stars or without stars they uh, have relatively low survival rates. There's not a lot of them out there to be, you know, graded or purchased. And so the ones that were a little bit more of a higher grade, they were messed with way too often. And so this coin is absolutely natural and beautiful. You can see just how crusty the coin is. Huge die crack coming down from about 11 o'clock down to 7 o'clock. And uh, extremely tough to get a sticker on. So very happy with that. The details all there. The shield's very strong, and everything you want to look for in an AU. Now, when we're comparing that 1838 to this 1837, you could see how there's almost like this glossy jewel luster. Someone dipped this in a harsh chemical, from my opinion. I think that's what brought out the luster and what made it probably an AU in terms of look. But I think that there's some detail missing in terms of what the portrait should hold. The other coin had a really nice, awesome amount of detail. This one's a little bit more lighter on the detail, but the luster is very strong, right? So sometimes things don't add up. We ended up sending in this coin anyway to see what would happen with it. And inevitably, I think it didn't deserve the sticker and it didn't sticker. Then we have this 1800 drape bust half dime. So in taking a look at this coin, most of the time what I do is I look down towards, you know, her dress. And I also look towards kind of the breast area there. To see how much detail there is, there needs to be a light amount of wear when it comes to XFs right there. It's going to be hard to show you, but in the next coin I'll be able to show you very well. But this coin has a substantial amount of wear coming all the way up through the dress onto the neck. And, uh, you know, I think the coin overall had a shot at getting a sticker. It's a very tough coin in any grade, especially in VF. But I do not think this coin had enough detail, unfortunately, to receive the bean. I felt like this coin maybe would have been good at a VF30. And you're going to see that in just a moment and the reason why. Once again, though, it's kind of hard to pick up on just how small the coin is and the holder that they have it in. So when you're taking a look at that coin, you can see all the detail kind of missing. Uh, you can see a little bit more, though, of the hair. So the hair is very important as well. See how there's that... A substantial amount of detail in the hair that overall for me is a good sign maybe there's something on the back that they didn't like you could see almost like a large amount of detail missing to the left of the eagle right about there so it's just everything that we're trying to look at to study our eye and understand exactly what coin would sticker wouldn't sticker and uh, I don't know it's kind of interesting it's kind of fun we have this 1807 drape us taft the coin I wanted to show you guys the reason why I like this coin so much is because when you look out in the fields, you can see that remaining luster, that nice little, you know, nice little purples and blues out there. You can also see an immense amount of detail. You see that a lot of the dress is preserved. You can also see that there's a light wear on the, on the breasts. But when you take a look more at the hair, it's almost missing. That's just from circulation. It's the first thing probably to go for the coin. I do love this coin as a VF30. It probably it could be in a VF35 holder, possibly XF40 holder, but you know, I was hoping for a gold sticker. Maybe one day I could find a good enough example to send this one in and say, hey, why didn't this gold sticker to begin with? And maybe they can give us that. Here's a 1926 sesquicentennial we ended up buying from a collection. So this coin 
has beautiful color on both sides. You can see kind of an orangish, purplish, blue. Natural progression of color. Great luster. You can kind of see that on the back as well. More of a gold and pink to it. I thought it was neat. I thought it was worth sending in just seeing uh, if we can add a little bit of a cherry on top to that offering. Then we have this 1911D, Strong D, 2.5. And it's great mint state 62. Most of the time when you're looking at the coin, you're looking at the fields, how many issues are out in the fields. Once again, this coin's kind of soft. They're just gold coins are soft in general. And you're looking at the cheek. And you're also looking at mainly the neck or the head on the eagle for wear. I didn't see any wear on this coin. But maybe they just didn't like the surfaces of the coin possibly. Maybe it was just dipped and it's a little bit too white for them. Who knows? I really would like to get a little bit more of an orangey color to it. But it's a key date nonetheless. It is mint state nonetheless. And uh, we thought it was a cool coin to try to send in, see if it would sticker. I think there's a two or $3,000 upgrade if it did. So this is a coin we picked up in Ohio. It's an 1854 large date, $10 gold piece. It's an XF45. As soon as I saw the coin, I said, man, this coin's original. There's one issue on the coin that really distracted me, which was this big, huge hit right underneath this star. But I felt like it was a great XF and it was worth trying. And uh, you can see the originality just popping off on the reverse as well. Great color, great look to the coin. And this one ended up stickering. A tough coin to get stickered. I think it's a $500 upgrade with a sticker, just because most of these just don't come original. And they don't come with as much detail. Then we have this 1917S Mercury Dime. Great luster. Nice looking coin. When you kind of tilt the coin a little bit, you can see some slight kind of slide marks on the cheek. Not sure if they would see that as wear or just as, you know, someone that shouldn't deserve a 63 full bands grade. I felt the coin was nice. We wanted to see if it would sticker. Unfortunately, it did not. We have this 1897 Indian head scent. When you're taking a look at the coin, once again, the cheek is uh, a pivotal point in terms of hits and in the fields there as well. I felt like this coin would be okay for a sticker. We had a customer send this in and then sell this coin to us. And uh, just a cool type coin, nothing crazy in terms of value. Happy to offer it to you guys. Then we have this 1939 Washington Quarter. It's in an old NGC fatty with a green label and it also is now CAC approved. I thought this coin was nice enough for a gold bean. I wanted to try it out and most of the time you're not losing too much if it's just green beans. I think we'll probably lose 10 or 15 bucks on this coin but if it does gold bean people will be very excited about it. Overall well preserved holder as well and a tad bit of a better date for Washington Quarters. So we ended up buying this coin a while ago, 1941 Proof Walker in 65. Casey said it might stick your eye. I disagree with him just based on, as you can see, this blackness right by the T. And that for me, I think they thought that was environmental damage in a way. It's just inhibiting the luster and most of the times that's what CAC doesn't like. It's acceptable for PCGS and NGC, but for them, I guess they just didn't agree with it. And that's okay. Then we have one of my favorite coins of the submission, this 1892 Barber Quarter. We bought this at the Longview show from a dealer behind us. He had it in his case for about 20 minutes, and I saw it, and I'm like, man, I got to try this one and see if it would pass. When you're looking at this coin, you want to see the hairlines in the fields, how, how extensive are they, and how good is the cameo in this coin. I felt the cameo was strong, and cameo just basically is the contrast between the fields and... Uh, you know, the detail. The detail is very white. Nothing is missing in terms of cameo. And I felt like the hairlines were light enough to send it in for a 64. And it did end up passing, which was great. Then we have a really cool coin that we sent in for a friend of ours. 1794 Half Dime and VG10 CAC. So this coin, most of the time with a lower grade, you need to look for the rim. Is the rim full? And how is the coin in terms of detail? I felt like there was enough hair going on and there wasn't enough issues to necessarily hold it back for us. I didn't like the coin just because there was a few light scratches across the eagle on the reverse. They must have thought that was okay and they wanted to run with it. 
I didn't think this coin would sticker for our friend, but I love being wrong, especially with a coin that only has about 7,700 that were minted, and it is a business strike. So we ended up buying this 1795 half dime. So when I buy low balls with Casey, we have to look at mainly the date. Is the date strong enough to purchase it? You know, if you're buying AG3s or Fair 2s, most of the time the date's going to be missing. And you really need the date to be present on these coins just so people can get attached to them and they want to see that, that date pop up. This coin had a full date. It's just a little bit maybe too much wear for them to say it was a good G4. Then we have this 1801 low ball. So this one, once again, you could see the date coming through. A little bit of the one is missing at the bottom and the 801 is still there. And this one passed at a fair two. Rightfully so, there's a lot of detail on the reverse still. And uh, yeah, definitely a neat little type coin especially affordable for people that are looking for it. Then we sent this one in for a friend of ours and it didn't pass unfortunately. Maybe they just didn't like the color on the coin. It has a little bit of a red to it. And there are a few little ticky marks out in the field that they just didn't like. You can see a little bit more of that red maybe on the reverse, but you know, nice Civil War coin nonetheless. Would be great with a sticker, but that's okay. Then we have a pretty cool coin that gold stickered in this video, a 38D over D. This one has an insanely strong strike, great luster, no issues. It's probably a 67 plus by today's standards, maybe a 68, but who knows, right? And uh, I felt like this coin would be great with a green sticker and we could offer it to our customers, but now it's a gold sticker, so we might have to get it reconsidered and see what happens with it. Then we have this three-legged buffalo, it's graded VF20. Uh, this one, we, once again, we felt was original enough, no issues going on in the fields. Nice look to the coin. And when you look at the reverse, which is what my friend pointed out, he said, always look at the horn and just study the detail. So in VF20, VF30, XF40, AU, MS, what does the horn look like? And especially in CAC approved grades and just work from there. This coin had a little bit of a light horn, as you can see. And uh, overall... It's a good coin to offer, especially for Buffalo collectors. Then we have a 1938D Buffalo Nickel. I wanted to get this one with a gold sticker, but maybe they just thought the strike was a little bit too soft right here by the cheek. I didn't see any too many distracting hits for the coin. I felt like it was a great gem, but I guess they didn't want to see it as a gold sticker, and that's okay. Then we sent in another D over D just to see if it would green sticker. This one, in terms of detail, was a little bit less. Um, you could see a softer strike right on the cheek as opposed to that 66. And uh, the luster is not as strong. You can kind of see it's a little bit more flat. And that's what I think probably held it back. The other one is just off the charts in terms of luster and of a strike. Here's a cool coin that we ended up buying from Preacher Bills. Don't see too many of these. And uh, it's just a double die reverse. It is CEC approved. It's just a good VG8. We thought it'd be nice with a sticker. You can see that slight little doubling there. And this coin we're probably going to hold on to for a little bit just because we love it. And uh, we've never seen one before. Hopefully we can see one again. Here's a 1885 CC that we sent in for a customer. We bought this from the pawn shop. I guess there's just too many ticky marks down here by the cheek and underneath the, the cheek. Most of the time with GSAs and NGC grading them, sometimes I think CAC believes that they're overgraded. They were just too generous with the grades they gave out. And that's why a lot of these GSAs don't sticker. And uh, I still think this coin's grade 66. It has some great color to it as well. And it is a really tough date. And the last coin I want to show you is this 1859S. Exceptionally tougher date. Unfortunately, they didn't think this coin would sticker. Maybe it's just due to a lack of detail or that they didn't like the old cleaning on the obverse. But either way, great coin to offer. We hope you guys enjoyed these coins. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on all the coins that we talked about today. Did you guys learn something? Did you guys understand a little bit more about 
these coins and why we felt like they were good stickers and why we felt like coins shouldn't have stickered, let us know down below. Make sure to subscribe. This was a more informational and educational video rather than, you know, doing a lot of things. And so please let us know if that's something that you guys want to hear more about and watch in the future. And we will see you guys next time.